Pokemon glitches and mistakes are always fun to find out about, especially if you didn't know they already existed. And on this channel so far, we've looked at huge mistakes and glitches in Pokemon Generation 1, Generation 2, and so in today's video, I thought, hey, Maybe it's time for Generation 3 to have its spotlight, so in today's video I'm going to be going over 15 huge mistakes and glitches in Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. Don't hesitate to drop a comment down below about the video and if you found it interesting or not. Don't forget to leave a like on this video too to show your support and I'll be sure to bring out a new video very shortly. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up to date and follow my Twitter to updates about the channel. Both of those links can be found in the description down below. Now without further ado, let's get into the video and I really hope that you guys enjoy these glitches and mistakes from the Generation 3 games. So our first Generation 3 mistake and glitch in Ruby and Sapphire is the Acro Bike Lockup. Now in the Japanese versions, continuously doing bunny hops by holding B in a patch of grass may cause the game to freeze after a wild battle. The game will not freeze if you weren't bunny hopping for too long, but the exact time you're required to bunny hop for is unknown. So it's all just down to chance to just keep bunny hopping and hey, if you're lucky, the game might freeze, which I guess is unlucky, but hey, you guys know what I'm talking about. If the freeze is caused at the peak of Mount Pyre, the clouds still actually move though. This was fixed though in the international versions of Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire. And our next glitch and mistake that we're going to be going over in today's video is known as the Sand Ornament Glitch. So another Japan exclusive glitch basically. In the secret base, it's possible to create a hole where a poster originally was, with a sand ornament and either a one tile or three tile poster. So what you gotta do is basically place a sand ornament against the wall, then collapse it by pressing A. After collapsing it, put either a one tile or a three tile poster behind the crumbled sand ornament, then exit and return to the secret base. This will cause the sand ornament to reappear in its original form, but with the poster behind it, because placing a poster behind an uncollapsed sand ornament is normally impossible. So anyway, when you collapse the sand ornament again, a hole will appear on the tile where the top of the sand ornament was. In the localizations though, it's not possible to place a poster behind a collapsed sand ornament. Our next glitch for Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire is known as the Surf on Land glitch and again it's in the Japanese versions. Yes, there are a lot of glitches in these Japanese versions of the games, but anyway, in the Japanese version you could use the Acro Bike to surf on land by jumping right next to the coast at a specific spot on Route 118 and using surf at the right moment while in midair. This was fixed in the international versions, however there's loads of different glitches that also spawn from this glitch, so hey, have fun with it. The next glitch for the Generation 3 games that we're going to be going over is known as the Trick Glitch. In the Japanese versions, once again, Trick can be used to switch mail with another item where the enemy is holding. This results in an item that has the mail icon, but acts like the item received with Trick. If this glitch is repeated 6 times, mail can be given to the Pokemon without having to attach a message, and you can just infinitely withdraw the item from your Pokemon by giving it mail then withdrawing again. This can also glitch up tiles which allows you to walk on water and similar things. He tried to give the glitch mail to another Pokemon in your party and change a phrase field. The type of a corrupted tile depends on the phrase though. The location of a corrupted tile depends on the phrase field that the new phrase was written to. In all other versions of Ruby and Sapphire, Trick will fail though if either Pokemon is holding mail, making the glitch impossible to perform. Our fifth glitch for today's video is known as the Yellow Scarf Glitch. In the Japanese version, once again, it is possible to receive both the Green Scarf for 200 points in the Smart Condition and the Yellow Scarf for 200 points in the Tough Condition from the chairman in Slateport City's Pokemon Fan Club by presenting a Pokemon with a high score enough smartness and talking to the chairman twice, even if the Pokemon does not have 200 points in the Tough Condition. Our next glitch for today's video is the Shiny Celebi glitch. So for the sake of consistency, every Pokemon in every single game is given a Shiny variant, and Celebi is no exception. However, because the only way to obtain Celebi legitimately was through distributions, which used fixed IVs to prevent it from being a Shiny, its Shiny version was left unobtainable through normal means. This sprite may still be seen in a lighter hue though if a Shiny Pokemon transforms into a Celebi. And some of you guys probably like, well hey, isn't it just shiny lock then? What's the problem with that? That's just a day to day thing we have when shiny hunting. Well, hey, shiny locked Pokemon didn't actually come into effect until Generation 5, and this was a Generation 3 game, so therefore, you know, shiny lock wasn't actually a thing, which is why it is a mistake in the games. 
Our next glitch for today's video is known as the trainer ledge or fence or wall glitch. So basically, in earlier versions of Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire, such as the English version, there are trainers in Route 118, Route 121, and the abandoned ship around the Lady Rose, Gentleman Walter, and Super Charlie, respectively, which can walk through ledges of walls if they spot the player. This glitch was fixed in later versions of Ruby and Sapphire, though, such as the Spanish version, as well as all versions of Emerald. Our next glitch and mistake in Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire is to do with Victory Road. So in B1 floor of Victory Road, there is a ledge near a certain staircase in the Japanese and English versions. Here, if the player jumps to the ledge to the left, he or she must go through a long path through B1F and B2F to be able to go back to the right of the ledge. In non-English European versions though, the ledge was shortened by one tile, making the path accessible in both directions. However, this ledge was removed entirely in Emerald and the Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire remakes. The next mistake for today's video in Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire is known as the Trainer Sprites mistake. So basically, certain trainers in Pokemon Ruby, Sapphire and Emerald were changed for the international versions. For example, Hex Maniacs were changed to have smaller eyes with pupils in their battle pose, and the female psychics have their arms stretched outwards, possibly because players might confuse the hands around the chest due to the handheld screen's resolution. The male cool train has minor changes to his hairstyle as well. However, the most notable is the Sailor because there's a lot of controversy around it. So basically, the sailor whose pose resembles a gesture called the brass dihana, involving raising a fist and slapping the biceps on the same arm as the fist used, also known as the Iberian slap or the Iberian finger, which is equivalent to giving the middle finger in countries and speak Spanish, Portuguese, French or Russian. So basically it was going to seem as kind of controversial and kind of rude as well, so they kind of had to change the sprite because hey, you don't want to be, you know, giving the middle finger to kids playing the game, you know, it's just not right. Our next glitch and mistake for the Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire games is known as the name change during evolution glitch. In the original English release, any Pokemon will have its name changed when it evolves as long as its current name is the same as the species name, which presumably means it's not a nickname. The game doesn't actually keep track of whether a Pokemon has been nicknamed until Generation 4. In Revision 1, it was changed so that it only applies to Pokemon with originated in an English language game. So for example, if you had a Bulbasaur named Bulbasaur in capital letters and received it in a Spanish language game, if traded to the original English Ruby or Sapphire games would be named Ivysaur when it evolves. But if traded to a later revision, its name would remain Bulbasaur. The revision 1 behavior was carried over to the European localizations of Ruby and Sapphire and to all releases of Fire Red, Leaf Green and Emerald. Our next glitch for today's video is known as the Berry Glitch. In the original release of the games, berry growth and other events based on the game's day counter will become frozen for 366 days, starting 366 days after the cartridge's real-time clock is initialized. This is caused by an off-by-one error in the function, which translates the calendar date supplied by the real-time clock into a day counter for in-game use. It was fixed in English Revision 2 and in Revision 1 for all other languages, though. The next glitch for today's video is known as the Sutopolis Rock Wall Oversight. Basically, in Sutopolis City, to the left of the staircase leading to the house of the old lady who talks about my pyre, there is a rock that the player can actually walk in. The player can only go one step in, however, so it's not really insane glitch, it's just again something cool that you can try out yourself if you haven't tried it yet. The next glitch and mistake for our Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire games is known as the 256 item selling price book. So when selling at least 256 of an item, even though the Pokemon states the correct price, for every 256 the total price is actually counters as Pokemon dollars and the player loses 2560 Poke dollars for every multiple of 256. The next glitch for today's video is known as the Doofa Gym Statue Error. So basically, the wall behind the statue to the right at the entrance of Doofa Gym behaves like a statue and you can actually press A on it. And when you do, it says Doofa Pokemon Gym Brawly Certified Trainers. And after Brawly is defeated, it will list the player as a certified trainer. So hey, nice though it's not on the statue and it's actually on the wall for once. It's very, very professional. Thanks a lot, Brawly. The last glitch for today's video though is known as the HP Bar Oversight Glitch. During a battle, if the player's Pokemon deals over 33,037 damage, the opposing Pokemon will faint without its HP Bar being drained. 
If the damage dealt is exactly 33,037, the HP bar falls to zero instantly without any delay. But with that, it does wrap up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed finding out these 15 glitches and mistakes from Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire, because I had a lot of fun making this video. But if you did enjoy it, please do leave a like. It really does mean a lot, and it really does help out. I'd also love to hear your guys' thoughts and any other glitches that are in the Generation 3 games that I may have not even spoke about in this video, because it's, like I say, awesome finding out about glitches. I do also have a couple top fives and other videos coming onto your screen in a second, so be sure to give them a watch if you do have the time, and also subscribe if you do enjoy my content. It's anything from me though, so thank you so much for watching guys, have an amazing rest of your day, and until next time guys, peace.